Morning ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the Real United States video blog and I'm your host Paul Campbell and today we have a substitute uh, videographer behind the camera is my son-in-law Chad McMinnis. Beverly's not able to join us today and we're here in Croswell, Michigan. Croswell, Michigan's a little town in uh, eastern Michigan population of 2,447 of the 2010 census. It's like tens of thousands of other small communities in the United States pretty typical of a small rural community with one major exception. Croswell is the town that I grew up in and I haven't had an opportunity to really share with you much about my life and where I grew up and so I thought I would take this opportunity to share with you my hometown. This is where I grew up, went to junior high and high school and uh, Croswell was founded in, the, uh, in 1845 just prior to our Civil War and was originally called Black River, named after the river that flows through town, the Black River, and shortly after that was changed to Davisville. A few years after that, it was finally changed to Croswell in honor of Governor Charles Croswell, who was governor of the state of Michigan at one point. So we're gonna take you around, show you what highlights there are from this small town in the middle of nowhere that I grew up in, and we hope you, uh, you enjoy this tour, a blast from my past, and we'll see what we have to show you.
Well, folks, this is the Black River. This is what the town was originally named for when it was founded. It runs from up in central Michigan all the way down to the St. Clair River, just south of where Lake Huron dumps into the St. Lawrence Seaway. And this is where I spent many a childhood days and summer days especially. And uh, my first wife and I spent a lot of time here talking for hours. Now behind me, you're going to see a bridge, which is locally called the Mother-in-Law Bridge. This is the only pedestrian suspension bridge in the state of Michigan. It was built in 1905, right around the time that uh, Michigan Sugar Company came to town. And in fact, the original cables that held the walkway were donated by Michigan Sugar Company. The original bridge cost only $300 to build. It's 139 feet long. There are 128 boards in the bridge. And uh, it's quite a tourist attraction. I mean, for a town of only 2,400 people, that's about as good as it gets, folks. But there's a beautiful park here, nice place to come fishing. We have a park across the, the river here, also which I, I spent many, many a day here fishing in uh, my late teens and early 20s. And it's just a very peaceful place. Uh, my my son-in-law and daughter lived uh, just up this hill uh, a couple of blocks until recently when they moved, and so the, the family's been here, you know, several generations now. My parents were here. I lived here for a while. My children live here. My grandchildren live here. So this town has has become very much a part of, of my life and and my family. For what that's worth. Uh, the river's not terribly deep and it's very slow moving. I'd say at most it's probably 12 foot deep this time of year. In the spring when the snow melts, I'd be standing about hip deep in water. This is a floodplain. And in fact, the water every few years washes over the bridge when we get a spring melt. But it's, even though it's overcast today, it's just a beautiful day out here, a nice peaceful day. Although it's a weekday, so there's, there's not a lot of people in the park. That's why I have it to myself, which is fortunate because it gets kind of weird when I have a live audience. Um, as you might have seen when we did the episode on the toll ships. And this is all, this was actually a landfill. If, uh, Chad, if you'll pan around, <clears throat> this was a landfill back in the 1970s, 60s and 70s, which has all been turned into a, a nice city park. They've built a nice pavilion here. And there's a boat launch dock that's floating down here. It's, it's, they've really done a lot to, uh, to improve it over the last 30 years, but it's always been a very important part of the town's culture, I guess you'd have to say. And uh, people, there's a festival here every, every year in, uh, in August. It was about two, three weeks, about three weeks ago, I guess, uh, in, uh, in honor of the, the Swinging Bridge or the Mother-in-Law Bridge. Now, when the bridge was originally built, it said, uh, love ye one another. And at some point in the, uh, I, I imagine the 1950s or 60s, maybe in the early 70s, they changed that sign which will show you to be good to your mother-in-law, and that's how the bridge became known as the Mother-in-Law Bridge. So we're gonna take you over there and show you a little bit of the bridge from that perspective. One of the things that's especially fun for young people to do on this bridge is to come out here and terrify your girlfriend. Because like any suspension footbridge, if you jump up and down on it, it starts to get a harmonic rhythm, a wave that goes in it. And it's a lot of fun to, to terrify your girlfriend, wife, friends, whatever, especially anybody that doesn't swim. Uh, and I've done that more than a few times. You can see pretty substantial cables. They're about an inch, inch and eighth in diameter. It hold a lot more weight than, than what's here, honestly. And that's why they feel comfortable saying that the weight limit is 50 people. That's the rated load. Obviously, the, the failure load would be much beyond that. But I, getting 50 people on there would be, yeah, pretty scary because 
somebody's gonna horse ass around and like scare the hell out of you. So we'll give you a trip across the bridge. So this is the major employer here in the city of Croswell, Michigan. This is Michigan Sugar Company. The Michigan Sugar Company was founded <clears throat> with five factories in about 1905. 1905 is when the factory actually opened. And this is the company that donated the cables that built the mother-in-law bridge that we talked about earlier. I did have the uh, fortune, good or bad, to, uh, to work here during one season of uh, sugar production, what they call the campaign. And uh, when they start sugar production, <clears throat> when they start sugar production, it's a 24 hour a day, seven day a week routine. It's a continuous operation. They start harvesting sugar beets, which is how we make sugar here in the northern climates rather than sugar cane. They start harvesting those sometime in early to mid-October. The campaign starts around the end of October or sometimes in early October. As a matter of fact, as I recall now, I started here on 10-4-1979. So October 4th of 1979, I started working here. And uh, sugar production is a pretty, pretty dirty business. It, uh, it's a very smelly operation. You get used to it if you live here. But there's a lot of aromas that, uh, that are in there that come out that you come home smelling, well, pretty stinky. And uh, to, to this day, my ex-wife still tells stories about the fact that I had to undress in the back room before I could even come in the house. But they, uh, they produce, oh, well, they slice somewheres on the order at the time of about 80 to 100 tons of sugar beets an hour. And I don't know exactly what the sugar production per hour at the time was, but it, it's definitely in the tens of tons per hour. Now, a lot of the sugar here that's produced is packaged in 100-pound bags and is used in commercial operations, uh, soda pop manufacturing, uh, baked goods, things like that. A small amount of it is packaged in small consumer packages and shipped off to distribution centers where it's, it's sold straight at the grocery stores. The uh, brands that they sell under, Pioneer Sugar and Big Chief, and Pioneer Sugar happens to be the brand they make here, and whence our high school became the Croswell Lexington Pioneers. So, go Pioneers. And, uh, for those of you who are from this town, maybe that uh, 
that'll see this, uh, this might be a blast from the past for you. You may remember every once in a while we'd get a cinder storm of those little microscopic cinders and get in people's eyes and stuff. That was always fun. At the time that I went to junior high school here, the junior high was only about a block and a half from here. It's now on the outskirts of town, we'll show you in a little bit. So we were like right downwind of the, of the factory. But this was my first non-farm job uh, as a young man. And uh, so memories both fond and not so fond of it. This is, uh, yeah, this is where I spent my, uh, my early career, the first year of my early career. Well, last stop of the tour, folks. This is the Croswell Lexington High School. This is where I graduated from high school before I went off to college. Sorry about the traffic noise, but I am on the most major highway. This is M90 or Michigan 90. It's the major thoroughfare across this part of the state. This is where I went to high school. This is where I marched in the Pioneer Marching Band. This is where my daughter went to high school. My first wife. This is where my grandchildren are going to high school now. And just over my shoulder, off in the distance, is the junior high school, the middle school, where I went to ninth grade. At the time, it was seventh, eighth, and ninth grade were in the middle school. 10th, 11th, and 12th grade were in the high school. I was actually the first ninth grade class in the middle school uh, when it was first built. So that's about how old that school is. Now the high school, which my brother also went to and uh, graduated several years before me, has, uh, has been here for, for a long time, but has since been added onto and expanded and looks substantially different than it did when I went here. But still, it's kind of a trip down memory lane, and it's an opportunity for you to see where I went to school and something about my youth and my past. So I'd like to thank you for joining us today on the Real United States video blog. We hope you've enjoyed this tour of Croswell, Michigan, where I grew up and went to school. We hope you'll take time to pick subscribe and join us if you haven't already. We'd like if you share this with your friends. And as always, thank you for watching.